By the time of the books, around 298 AC, Sir Barristan Selmy, known as Barristan the Bold, is considered the greatest living knight and the Lord Commander of the King's Guard. But how did he become so renowned? And how did he start off? So this video, I want to talk about one of my favorite characters in the books. Barristan, a boy with pale blue eyes and blonde hair, was the firstborn son of Sir Lionel Selmy, the Knight of Harvest Hall, in 236 or 237 AC, during the troubled reign of Aegon V Targaryen. Their house sigil consisted of three stalks of yellow wheat on brown. His home, called Harvest Hall, sat in the Dornish Marches in the Stormlands. Though the name Marcher Lords is given to the lords of the Stormlands and the Reach that live within the Dornish Marches, it is believed until after Barristan, House Selmy was only landed knights. This meant while they could have a keep, land, peasants, men-at-arms, and sworn swords, they did not have the authority to deliver justice in their land, the right of pit and gallows. Instead, they had to come to their liege lord, and they are sworn to fight for the lord who holds ownership over their land. While some landed knights could certainly have more wealth than the poorest lords, they always had less prestige and would always be outranked by the lords at tourneys and feasts. As his father was the head of House Selmy and Bearston was his firstborn son, he was the heir to Harvest Hall. But from the moment Bearston took a sword in his hand, he dreamed of being a king's guard, and this desire would fuel the boy on. In his youth, he squired for Lord Manfred Swan, and at the age of 10 years old, he decided it was time to compete in a tourney. Taking borrowed armor, he competed as a mystery knight, in the tourney at Black Haven. Obviously very small appearing, he was only 10 years old, others laughed at the boy who wanted to compete, and no one would joust against him. Except for one man. Prince Duncan Targaryen, son of King Aegon V, took pity on the poor boy and competed against him. Though Prince Duncan defeated the boy, he gave him his epitaph he would carry for the rest of his life, the bold. So from that day forth, Barristan became known as Barristan the Bold. The boy continued to grow at Harvest Hall, sometimes playing a game with his cousins where they'd spin a bottle and the spinner would kiss the person it pointed to, and practicing his sword skills. Though he was never a religious boy, nor would he grow to be a pious man, he did pray from time to time. He also wasn't very interested in books either. Even in old age, no one would ever consider Barristan very cunning. The guy was just much, much more interested in his sword skills and his dream of becoming a white cloak, especially after the tourney at Black Haven and his interaction with Prince Duncan. And Barristan the Bold wasn't done with tournaments or Prince Duncan by a long shot. Six years later, he decided to compete again as a mystery knight at the age of 16. This occurred at the Winter Tourney at King's Landing, and he was said to have performed amazing feats of prowess, defeating Prince Duncan and Sir Duncan the Tall, the Lord Commander of the King's Guard. He was so impressive, I mean, come on, he unhorsed Sir Duncan the Tall. King Aegon V knighted him. When King Aegon V laid his sword on Barristan's shoulder, it felt as light as a maiden's kiss to him. And as the boy said his knightly vows, the words caught in his throat, he was so overjoyed. At the feast that night, he ate wild boar ribs that were prepared with dragon peppers, the Dornish way. And if you know the Dornish, they like everything very hot. The ribs were so hot, his entire mouth burned. Five decades later, he would remember that day, becoming a knight, and the taste of those super, super hot ribs burning his mouth. But this was only the beginning of his success as a knight. When Jaehaerys, later to be King Jaehaerys Targaryen II, commanded for his son and daughter to wed after a woods witch told him the prince that was promised would be born of their line, Barristan attended the wedding of Ares and Rala. It was well known that there was no fondness between the future King Ares II and his sister wife Rala. Even Barristan would note that when he saw them wed. He believed the realm paid dearly for the dislike between those two. In 259 AC, the tragedy of Summerhall occurred, killing Aegon V, among many others. His son, Jaehaerys II, came to the throne and, unfortunately, had to deal with war almost immediately. 
A band of nine, consisting of mercenaries, pirates, merchants, and most importantly, Maley's Blackfire, known as Maley's the Monstrous, came together to achieve their own kingdoms. The Band of Nine meant to conquer the Seven Kingdoms for Maleys, who felt as a descendant of Daemon Blackfire, he deserved the throne. And I've gone over the Blackfire Rebellions a lot in other videos, so you can always watch those if you want to learn more about the causes and each one. What's important for this video is that in 260 AC, King Jaehaerys II saw the threat to the Seven Kingdoms was finally enough, and he sent a large host to the Stepstones to stop the Ninepenny Kings. This began the fifth, and so far final, Blackfire Rebellion, known as the War of the Nine Penny Kings. While many brave men fought during this war and distinguished themselves, among them Tywin and Kevin Lannister, Aerys Targaryen, the future Mad King, and Brendan Tully, it was Barristan Selmy, about 23 years old at the time, who ended the war. Cutting through the Golden Company and leaving a bloody path in his wake, he met Maleys in single combat, and the bold slew Maleys the Monstrous, the last of the Blackfire pretenders that we know of. The war had been won with a stroke of Barristan's sword, and songs would be sung about his victory. And we can't be positive when it happened, but Barristan did admit he fouled his pants the first time he was in battle. Was this the War of the Nine Penny Kings when he soiled himself? Maybe. Can't know for certain. Barristan has also seen whole armies destroyed by the Bloody Flux, but don't have exact dates for that either. But there are other dates and relations to Barristan that are also very unclear, such as him being reported to have defeated Cedric Storm, the Bastard of Bronzegate, and Lormel Longlance. When or where did these events happen? I'd say who knows, but I know who knows. Oh well. For his hand in ending the fifth Blackfire Rebellion, the man finally completed his dream and became a member of the Kingsguard at 23 years old. Before Lord Commander Sir Gerald Hightower, he swore his vows, and Jaehaerys II gave him his white cloak. In doing so, Barristan gave up his inheritance, Harvest Hall, the girl he was supposed to marry, who then ended up marrying his cousin in his place, as he no longer had any need for sons or lands. His life, as he always wanted, was now for the realm and the king he would protect. His cousin also may have taken over Barristan's claim of Harvest Hall. Unfortunately, that's a little unclear. But what we do know is by the time of the books, Barristan still isn't the heir or head of Harvest Hall, his great nephew, Arstan Selmy is. And whilst believe how Selmy was full of landed knights, Arstan is called Lord of Harvest Hall. It might actually be more than a landed knight, be a lord, when the books begin. But back to Barristan. Though not a bookish man, he would often glance through the pages of the White Book, a record of deeds and actions of each Kingsguard, to see the deeds of his brothers before him. He noticed that the worst of the Kingsguard were those that tried to play the Game of Thrones, which I completely agree with you, Barristan. Sometime during his service under King Jaehaerys, the Kingsguard remembers the king telling the man that madness and greatness were two sides of the same coin, and that every time a new Targaryen is born, the gods toss the coin in the air, and the world holds its breath to see how it will land. In 262 AC, King Jaehaerys died after just three years of rule and at the age of around 37 years old, and his son Ares II became king. When Ares II Targaryen came to the throne, Barristan noted that he always had a little madness in him, but he claimed that every child knew that the Targaryens have always danced too close to madness. He also noted that Prince Ares, as a boy, was smitten with Joanna Lannister, and was present when Tywin Lannister, the Hand of the King, and Joanna married. Sir Barristan Selmy was also present at Tywin's wedding to see King Aerys II drink too much wine, say it was a pity that Lord's right to first knight had been abolished, and later during the betting ceremony, he saw Aerys take liberties with Joanna that Tywin would never forget about. Despite Tywin never forgetting those slights, the year Viserys Targaryen was born to Aerys II and Ralla in 276 AC, Tywin Lannister held a tourney at Lannisport in honor of that birth. Barristan attended as King Aerys II went, but he was defeated by Prince Rhaegar during the tourney, who eventually was defeated by Sir Arthur Dane. This was also the tournament Tywin Lannister suggested to King Aerys that Rhaegar should marry his daughter Cersei, but of course we know Aerys refused. 
At some point later, Barristan also competed in the Tourney of the Silver Bridge and defended the passage against all challengers. Later still, he would be the victor in a melee at Maiden Pool. But in 277 AC, things took a turn for the worse, and Barristan would commit an act he would be remembered and honored for all his life. Dennis Darklin, Lord of Duskendale, had become upset that his town, an important port on Blackwater Bay, had its wealth and trade shrink due to King's Landing being so close by. Lord Darklin tried to win a charter for his town, as Dorn had done before, but the hand of the king, Tywin Lannister, rejected it. This led to Lord Darklin in 277 AC to stop paying taxes. Despite being advised not to go, King Aerys II went to Duskendale to hear Lord Darklin's proposal and to get him to start paying taxes again. King Aerys II was just trying to prove he could deal with the problems without Tywin, as the two men had a very strained relationship at this point. So he only went with one Kingsguard, Sir Gawain Gaunt, and a small escort. But, oh look, it was a trap. Sir Gawain was slain by Simon Hollard, and Ares II was taken as a prisoner. For half a year, King Ares II was held in the dungeons of Duskendale, where he was incredibly mistreated. Tywin, in turn, sat outside Duskendale with a great host that could storm the town at any time. But Lord Darklin warned if Tywin Lannister did such a thing, the king would immediately die. Most of the small council urged Tywin not to attack the town, and warned that Lord Darklin would most likely kill the king if he did. However, Tywin allegedly fired back. He may or he may not, but if he does, we have a better king right here. Indicating King Aerys II's son, Rhaegar. Before he could put that plan in motion, Barristan offered another solution. The knight would enter the town in secret to rescue the king. Tywin believed this plan bordered on madness, but out of respect for the courage and prowess of Sir Barristan, he gave him a day to attempt the plan. If he failed and wasn't back by dawn the following day, Tywin would storm Duskendale. Barristan learned for the first time the saying, the hour of the wolf, meaning the blackest part of night from Lord Tywin, and in that blackness, Sir Barristan the Bold made his rescue attempt. He first scaled the walls of the town on scene, using nothing but his bare hands. He disguised himself as a hooded beggar and made his way to Dunfort, where they were holding King Ares. Upon finding Dunfort, he scaled those walls with his bare hands once more, and then killed a guard on the wall walk before he could raise the alarm. The maesters say he used stealth and courage to find his way to the dungeon where his king was being kept and released him. However, by the time he was able to free the king from the dungeon, Ares' absence had been noted. The alarm was sounded, but Barristan refused to run or give the king up, and he stayed and fought. The first to strike, the Kingsguard killed a pair of guards unaware as well as Simon Hollard, payback for his Kingsguard brother, Sir Gwain, being killed by the man earlier. Barristan then fought his way to the stables, killing anyone who would try to stop him. Once reaching the stables, they were able to ride out of Dunfort before the castle gates were closed. Ares and Barristan raced through the streets of Duskendale while trumpets and horns sounded the alarm. Coming to the town's walls, they raced up them as Lord Tywin's archers attempted to clear it of defenders. It was the hour of the wolf when Barristan had begun his rescue attempt, and it was the hour of the wolf when he completed it. After his hostage was gone, Darklin knew it was over, and instead of having his town taken by Tywin, he bent the knee and begged for mercy. He didn't get it. Ares II extinguished House Darklin and killed all of House Hollard except one boy. Dauntus Hollard was spared only because he was a young boy and Barristan had asked for his life to be spared as a reward for rescuing the king so the boy was taken to King's Landing to be a squire, his life spared due to Barristan the Bold. In part two, I'll talk about life after Duskendale for Barristan Selmy. Spoilers, the Mad King became super crazy. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe because these videos take a really, really long time.